Hi, in this section, we're going to be looking at data stores and how we can save data from our programs using the various built-in Elixir options at our disposal. We'll start by having a quick look on what are data stores and what are our most common options when it comes to them. We'll then follow up with an in-depth look at ETS, a built-in data store that's very simple to use. Finally, we'll have a look at some more specialized and robust data stores, DETS and Mnesia, and when and how we can use them. Let's move on with the first video, ETS. In this video, we'll have a look at the types of data stores that we can use on our programs, followed by an in-depth look at one of the built-in options provided by Elixir, ETS. Let's talk about data stores first then. We are usually interested in storing and retrieving data on our Elixir programs. A data store is a mechanism that allows us to create, read, update and delete data. And when we think of data stores, usually three options come to mind. We can store data as collections in memory, like lists or maps, which is really simple. However, we have to code every function to read, delete and update by hand. We also have files which make the persistent storage of simple data easy, but we also have to write our own functions to serialize the data in and out of files, which is even more cumbersome than working within memory collections. And finally, we can opt for a full-fledged database management system, or DBMS. These range in complexity and usefulness, and while more useful than the previous two options, we'll still have to worry about transforming data in and out of the system. Fortunately, Elixir has already some built-in data stores that we can use out of the box. The first of them is the ETS, which stands for Erlang Term Storage, and comes from the time of Elixir's parent language, Erlang. So it's pretty much battle-tested. ETS is an in-memory data store that's owned by a process. Thus, all data disappears once the backing process dies, so that's something to take note and be careful about. ETS allows us to store any Elixir data type directly without having to convert between representations. It's a key value data store, which means that we can look up any value by its unique key, which has a constant access time and is thus very fast. We're going to use ETS to implement a book catalog. A book is a tuple that contains the name of the book as an atom, its rating from 0 to 10, and the page count. Let's create our book table called books using ets.new. Our table will be a set, since we don't want any duplicate books. Now, let's add our first book into the table using ets.insert. We're creating a fairy tale book with a rating of 10 and 329 pages. Let's do the same for another book, a horror novel, which will have a rating of 9 and 128 pages. To fetch a book by name from our table, we can use the ets.lookup function and pass the name of the book, which is our key. The return is a list of all matched book entries, which contains our novel. We can now do the same for the fairy tale book and expect a similar result. Let's delete our horror novel using the ets.delete function and passing the name of the book to delete. Fetching the empty book yields an empty list. We can also delete the entire table by calling ets.delete with no arguments. If we try to do any operation with our table after deleting it, we'll get an error back. We can specify different types for the ETS to configure how data can be stored and accessed. Sets only allow unique keys to exist on the table, which means that any attempt to insert a duplicate key will replace the existing one. The only difference between both set types is that the ordered set implies ordering on keys, which is sometimes important for some applications. Bags, on the other hand, allow duplication to some extent. The regular bag allows duplicate keys to be specified, and we will get results back as a list when we look up for a single key. However, regular bags don't allow for duplicate key value pairs, while the duplicate bag does. Choose the right type for your particular application. In terms of access types, we have public, protected, and private. The only difference being the permissions other processes have on the table besides the owning process. Public allows read and write, protected allows only read, and private does not expose the table to outside processes. For most applications, we want tables to be private and accessed by a single process. We've seen some simple lookups, but aren't there more advanced functions we can use to query our ETS table? Well, Elixir provides a few more advanced functions. We have match, which works like a lookup, but allows the return result to change its contents and order. We have select, which is an extension of match and allows expression or match specs to be used to query the table like a SQL expression. And finally, we have fun 2 ms which converts a function to a match spec, which can then be used on select. fun 2 ms is quite interesting since writing match specs for select is quite cumbersome, 
It requires the users of dollar sign expressions, which are very difficult to read and rationale about. This is mainly due to the early Erlang roots of these functions. One thing to note is that Fun2MS might not work outside IEX, so be extra careful when using it. We can find all books which have a rating of 9. To do this, we pass a match tuple to the ets.match function. This match tuple contains the representation of the object we wish to match against on our table, with some substitution of variables mixed in. These are represented by dollar sign atoms and will determine the position of the corresponding elements on the output structure. We can reverse the position of the title and page count on the output by changing the dollar sign values of those two variables. If we don't care about the value of a specific match element, we can use the underscore atom and it will be discarded from the output. We can do more complex queries by using the ets.select function. This function takes a list of match expressions, which are tuples containing three elements, the match pattern, a list of conditions to match against, and the projection of the output. We can use ets.select to simulate ets.match by passing in an empty list of conditions. To retrieve the whole object as output, we can project to $$ or $$ underscore. Dollar dollar will output the pattern as we would expect from ets.match, while dollar underscore will output the actual object on the table, with all fields. If we wish to select all books with a rating equal or above 9, we can use the condition list to do so. Let's assign the rating variable to dollar 2 and use a single expression that applies the greater than or equals operator to dollar 2 and the value 9. Now this syntax is all pretty complicated with the dollars and the underscores and etc, but we can use a nifty little function called fun2ms to create the match expression for us using simple elixir constructs. We just have to pass an anonymous function that pattern matches against our book object and use a guard clause to enforce the condition we had before, which is the rating greater than or equal to 9. And finally, when all this is done, we just need to have the output of the function be the projection of the book. Now we just have to feed this expression to ets.select and we will get the same outcome as we did before.